friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a cataract with posterior synechia the patient had frequent attacks of anterior uveitis and the people has taken this flower petal appearance after dilatation with tropicamide and phenylephrine I have taken up this case for surgery let us observe the surgical steps by this time the main incision and two side ports have been made and now an air bubble is injected my plan is to stain the anterior capsule with trypan blue dye underneath an air bubble and here goes the dye but since the pupil is only a small part of the anterior capsule is exposed some amount of dye is applied under the iris this is a bit of adrenaline and now this is a simco cannula with this and breaking the synechi I can see the membrane has come to the left side. Now, two percent HPMC is injected into the anterior chamber, and I take a rexis forceps to remove the membrane. and the membrane came off very easily there were few bleeding points at the pupillary margin but the bleeding stopped by itself in a few seconds this is an iris spatula checking if there is any synechia anywhere and now visco is injected the size of the pupil is about 4.5 mm so i thought of using a b hex pupil expansion device but see what happens during application of BHEX the leading flange is stuck but the trailing flange is stuck in the wound I tried to push it but it didn't go in go through the right side port hold the middle tab pull it inside and then tuck this flange at one o'clock then go through the left side port and tuck the flange at 10 o'clock by this time the flange at 7 o'clock which was above the iris part of it has gone behind the iris so we have to tuck it properly and it is done now the people has taken a beautiful hexagonal shape and this is 5.5 mm people and i'm going to do capsulorexis the capsule is torn by the tip of the uterata forceps capsular tag is raised and this tag is guided all around along the border of the people to get an adequate size trexis of about 5.25 mm <coughs> and now hydro dissection is done as I do hydro dissection the people dilated 
and the B hex tended to come off but it is still in place the nucleus rotated nicely and now some more SPMC is injected to fill up the anterior chamber and now this is the fake one it will see what happens by the irrigation there was reverse pupillary block the people dilated to almost 7 millimeter and the BHEX just came off what to do now I didn't come out at this stage wanted to chop the nucleus and see what happens and this is a good crack rotate the nucleus hold the nucleus at another place and chop it and I'm going to emulsify this free nuclear fragment and at this time the B hex is in the anterior chamber so I'm supporting the B hex with the chopper so that it doesn't hit the corneal endothelium supporting it at the iris plane and now supporting it with the FECO needle and inject SPMC inject SPMC and come out and I see that as I come out the pupil is small again size of the pupil is about 4.5 millimeter at this time so I thought of applying the BHEX again tucking alternate flanges again tucking the 10 o'clock flange and at this time I planned to go in with irrigation as well as aspiration not only irrigation so that the people doesn't dilate too much so as I go in I start aspirating and yes the B hex is not completely dislodged it is partially it is lost but it is still still a portion of the B hex is behind the iris and the people is uh, small at this time and the B hex is in place and I am emulsifying the nuclear pieces with 60% ultrasonic energy 45 ml per minute flow rate and 450 vacuum and now I inject some visco by the time bimanual irrigation aspiration is ready I start removing the cortex with this 23G Simco so cortex from 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock are removed and now I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration and I remove the cortex from the upper part irrigation goes through the right side board and the cortex from 10 o'clock 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock are removed and now I change hands and remove the cortex from 3 o'clock 
At this time I plan to remove the B hex because it is not serving anymore. Probably we could have managed this case without B hex. But sometimes it happens. We cannot judge accurately beforehand. And now I inject some more visco so that people dilates a little more. And yes, it has dilated. I can see the Rex's margin now. And here goes the intraocular lens. This is hydrophobic monofocal single piece intraocular lens and the lens has gone in the capsula back. And now we have to remove the visco very nicely. Let us review what to do if the B hex comes off. We have to support the B hex with the chopper so that it doesn't come to the corneal endothelium. And in this case, I did that. And then I supported the B hex with the FECO needle, injected some B hex, reapplied the B hex, and removed the B hex before implanting the intraocular lens. This dilatation is because of reverse pupillary block. It is also called LIDRS, a lens iris and diaphragm retropulsion syndrome. As soon as we go inside the eye with irrigation, the iris is iris presses onto the anterior capsule and the pupil dilates. Lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome LIDRS. And see what happens as I do the final lavage. As I go in with irrigation, this pupil, which is about 3.5 millimeter now, will dilate. as I try to form the anterior chamber. This time, um, this is the final lavage and see, as I try to form the anterior chamber, the people has dilated. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical skills.